Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be, or good evening or good night. This is Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations, a place to create, share and play. I've discovered that while I'm junk journaling, a lot of it is like a creative practice and I think it helps us in all of our art and it's a great place to also display all of our art. So I thought what a fun, easy, beginner friendly way to do creative exercises, improve our artistic confidence and, you know, refine your personal style or find it if you haven't found it already. So I hope you'll join me and, you know, we'll just play about weekly. Oh, weekly-ish. Hello, everyone. I am here today with these super cute little bobbin journal cards. So I was doing some bobbins, you know, for myself, just rough ones as I was putting lace away. And then I thought, I love these. I'm going to make some journal cards. So the ones I'm using for my lace, you know, are just cut up with scissors. But these ones, I actually used my envelope punch. Now, they're just with light cardstock it's actually scrapbook paper cardstock so I'll show you that's the pad that I've got for the pattern ones and they look quite cute and then I've just got a brown cardstock and that's the pad that I used for that so I have the works scoreboard punch trimmer like it's a five in one thing so the little bit that you can use to punch the tab tops I turn that around and this is how I punch it out. And so that gives me the, the bottom of the uh, reels and I'm doing that on each of the cards. Now, doing it this way, it doesn't matter what size I cut the cards. I can have them as thick as I like, as thin as I like. These are about the size of a regular business card. Perhaps actually a little bit bigger because I didn't actually yeah yeah they're a bit bigger than a business card there you go I'm already leading you astray <laughs> but yeah nice and quick and easy to do it on these obviously you could just use scissors once you cut out one shape then you can just use that as a stencil to trace around and cut out your other shapes so quite easy to do by hand as well I'm using my corner rounder for the little top corners and yeah the punch board has made the underneath side a nice little rounded corner as well so I'm doing that for each of them and then all I do is I just slice to actually get the cotton part of the reel and that's how I make my bobbins so so quick and easy and I've actually cut myself some spares as well so that I've just got some blanks that I can use at any time so they can be you know a page decoration they don't have to be journal cards they can be you know whatever your little heart desires <laughs> but just a fun thing to play with all it is is just a shape but it's amazing how just making them a different shape as a little journal card just makes them so much more interesting and so cute so you can see with those three I had them in different shapes all right so I cut a little slit out of one of the leftover pieces of card and I used that just to ink a little line and that just inked a slightly thicker line on the top and the bottom and then all I did was I used the side of that cardboard as a line stencil. Now little tip this is a great way to just do really quick and simple lines on your journal pages. So you know how sometimes you're after some lined paper or some little borders just use the side of a piece of cardboard and voila you'll get all your little lines but yeah I just kind of crisscrossed this as I was stamping it in and then it gives that effect of cotton now the best part is I got to use my really cute little train stamp this is a little vintage one I think it's from the 30s and it's roll it's a little roller so it actually rolls a little line of trains so see that isn't it cute so I was really thrilled to be able to use that. It was just perfect on the top and bottom. Anyhow, my normal bit, I inked around the edges and, you know, into the little slots. Now, how awesome is this? Also doing on playing card size. Oh, so that's the size of them. They're, they're around a regular playing card size. I used just some really cute little vintage playing cards I had and what I was putting over them there was some matte medium 
just to take the shine off because I couldn't find my little sanding block. So now, this is pretty funny. On the back of where I've stamped, I'm putting a little slip of paper to make the journaling spot really clear. I'm being really careful at this point to make sure it's the right way up. And then once I stamped my word onto it and I turned it over, I realised, oh, I did it upside down. <laughs> upside down, Miss Jane. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that'll be fine. But it did bug me and I did find a way to fix it in the end. Anyhow, snipping up some cheesecloth pieces because I always love using my cheesecloth. And then I had all these little strips. So these were... You know how we tear off the edges of our paper? These were just a whole heap of those strips that I'd run through the sewing machine on a big long line and then I chop some down just to use as decorations for these. And voila, it's like a little instant cluster, I guess. Now on this one, I popped a little postage stamp on the top, one of those little sticker ones, which I thought was a bit cute. I inked it up and grunged it up a bit, you know, beforehand. And then that's pretty much finished. So what I'm doing here is I really love that kind of topper for tags, just a little, you know, square or rectangle piece, inking inside the little hole as I punch it. And then I can just put a piece of ribbon through it, which I'm doing here. So I used a few bits and bobs together and they actually came from Which Craft Do You Do? I I love getting her fantasy fibres where she puts, you know, some different colours together. Just really fabulous. And this is how I solved the fact that I did the word upside down. I then did it all the way around in a border and, you know, voila, it looks like I meant to do it like that. And actually it looks pretty cute. So then I thought, oh, well, I'll do another one on the front. So I just did it up by sticking that onto a slightly larger, darker piece and then it's a little label that's hand stamped. So that's the principle of what I'm putting together. So I'll show you a couple of others that I did. And then I did something a little bit different at the end, which is so easy and so cute. So yeah, if you you know, stick around to the end, you'll see that. And then I had this little scrap of fabric near me on the desk and I went, oh, I'll just tie that in on this one tied a little piece of string around the bottom like this and you know that was that little piece of decoration on my prototypes some I actually wrapped cotton around the bobbin itself and then I stuck the decorations in the journal card on top of that which just helped secure it down and so you know that was another little element that made it a bit more 3d and interactive but yeah there's the first one. So yeah, I I, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, I really like them. I thought they were so fun and they're a bit different. I'm sure I'm not the first one that's thought of them, but they were completely new to me. And as I said, just something that while I was organising my supplies. And that's something else that you've got to remember that is fabulous for you when you're creating. And that is if you're just tidying things up and organising things, it's amazing how then ideas come to you. So your brain isn't engaged in, it's, it's like you're not looking at a blank page and you have all of these elements that you're putting away that are acting as prompts. So you're just accessing a completely different part of your brain. So yeah, if you're stuck for what to do, do some tidying, do some organising, just go through and test out some pens, see which ones are working, which ones aren't, you know, all that sort of thing. So on this one, I still did some stamping on the top and bottom, but all I did on this was just the top of these little, uh, I think they were lilacs or maybe lavender stamp, you know, just on the top and bottom. So another thing that I was just trying out all different ways. It's on the top and bottom. I thought I'd add a little bit of colour with some string and this is some embroidery cotton. So it's just slightly thicker. However, I, you know, doubled it up just so that I could see it even more clearly and I'm struggling to tie the knot. <laughs> ah, there we go. 
all right, so snipped it off and then I sort of just frayed those edges out, popped another one of those little uh, strips that I sewed. And this time, of course, I had to have a butterfly. How can I possibly create anything without a butterfly? <laughs> Butterflies just, I don't know, they fix everything, they help everything. Remember when Louise Heinzel said that in Defemerembra? And uh, yeah, totally agree. Butterflies always save us. So there you go, that's number two. And then I grabbed some of that hand stamped fabric and I ripped off some little pieces and I decided to use them in the next one. So I'm just fraying up the edges. And for this one, I thought, well, I've got to play with those playing cards. And this is what I came up with for them. So again, I'm just using the edge of the card all the way for this, but I still wanted to get that effect of the cotton going across. So I popped them on and putting that matte medium over really helped make everything stick and adhere and, you know, it uh, worked really, really well. So I'm really glad I did that. Now I'm just putting one of those hand stamped fabrics with a little fussy cut flower on top that I got from gorgeous Kay over at her Essie shop and little label on the bottom, little tag on the top, little journal spot on the back, pop the little tag over and how simple is that? Really fast and the playing card, like it just gives you that lovely sturdiness. Ribbons through the top and that one's finished. So yeah, I have a whole pack of these particular cards so I'm going to do a load of them. So then as I had the ribbon out, I thought, well, these are bobbins, so how cute would it be to actually put some of my hand-printed ribbon that I've got and actually make it a bobbin? So then I did a kind of little cluster just on a bulb pin with a little charm and I pinned that through and then that again is another piece of ephemera that we can use in our journals. Isn't that brilliant? Now I've got a video coming up very soon. I've actually filmed it. I just am finishing off voicing and editing it, but it is a quick one to show you just how easy these hand stamp ribbons are. So I'll give you, you know, the basics and then you can go off and multiply creatively. <laughs> So yeah, I really like using the playing cards for that. I thought they were so much fun. So there's some more little bobbin with the hand stamped pieces that I've got. And all the little tags are from Witchcraft Do You Do. I love their set. So I'll make sure I put a link to which set I used down below. And then here's the front and the back of, you know, a whole load that I played with. Some that you saw me do here, like the little butterfly one. And then some of the other ones that I've put together. Have fun and I hope you go and create some of your own. Enjoy. I'd love it if you could leave me a comment below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time. And in the meantime, keep creating.